we make money. Got about six cars in here right now. Total fleet of 100. It's always empty. I think I'm going to buy a McLaren 720S and rent it out in Dubai. I'll tell you, stop right now. All my McLarens have been ridden off. I haven't owned one McLaren that has not had an accident. People think it's fun and glory. It's not. It's, it's not. a hard business to go into. There's 3,500 rental car companies here in Dubai. There's a big competition. Did you anticipate the business to be like this? I thought it's easy. You just buy four or five cars, rent them, you get paid. Everyone's happy. I learned the lessons along the way, man. In my group, I'm probably the wealthiest one out of them. They all look up to me, but I don't like that. I like to be on the same level. I like if we go somewhere, we want to jump in a private jet i'm not the only one paying for example it's either you got it in you or you don't man like everyone thinks they have it in them but they're not willing to work for it man these things don't, don't mean nothing to me i've been at the bottom of the bottom and i've been to the top again many times ahmed i appreciate you coming on the ceo cast bro i've been looking forward to this man i think we've been trying to arrange this for quite a while now i spoke yeah, to I you know. maybe i think it was maybe a year and a half ago two years but yeah, yeah. i know you're a very very busy man expanding the business constantly it's crazy man yeah it's been crazy bro so for the people watching this right now not necessarily know who you are how would you introduce yourself? Um, I'm Ahmed Amwell. So uh, Ahmed Mansour is my name. Mm -hmm. They call me Amwell, which is uh, in Arabic means money. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that before. It was actually your last name. No, no, it's not my last <laughs> name. So when I was growing up back home, they used to always call me Amwell yeah. or papers in English. Yeah. So like when they used to scream out the window, yeah, papers or yeah, Amwell. That's how they used to they meet and greet me, like my friends and stuff, my close boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've just kept that name since, and it just went trending here, and it just kept on going, man. You're originally from Lebanon, right? Lebanese, but my, uh, my parents are both from Lebanon, but I was born and raised in Australia, Sydney. Okay. How long were you in Australia for until you came here? I was uh, born and raised there till I was about 28, then I moved over to, to oh. Dubai. How, do you, how old are you now? 34. Much so you've been here for a while yeah, then? Yeah, yeah five, six years now, man. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you're probably the biggest in terms of car rentals out here, and obviously yeah. in Dubai, as we yeah. all know, that is a massive, massive Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah for everything. I think right now, um, I think we're the biggest. Especially in the Middle East, we're the biggest guaranteed. But yeah. maybe in the world, I go on other people's websites. I check what they have, like in Miami and, yeah. and LA and stuff. 20, 30 supercars. We're yeah. on 100 cars plus. I'm interested to know then. So off the back of that, are you competing with the world or just Middle East? Um, only the Middle East, to be honest. But even then, we don't compete with anyone. Like we, we have our own league sort of thing. And we have our own clients. And yeah. we don't bother anyone. We stay in our lane and repeat clientele and friends on friends and referrals. And our marketing, obviously, is very good. They don't bother us, man. Yeah, yeah. Like when, even when I see a newcomer come, doesn't bother me. Yeah. I see someone that's been here for ages, doesn't bother me. Yeah. People that I used to see as competition, now they don't bother me. Like as I first started, I used to see them go on their websites. Oh, they bought a new Ferrari. I used to get, you know, oh shit, I need another Ferrari. I need yeah, to keep yeah. up. Now, alhamdulillah, we're ahead of the game and we've got cars coming every 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 month. We've got two, three cars coming. So we have heaps of new fleet coming to this year, especially. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to a point where supply and demand's enough and khalas. That's, that's what cars you got coming this year? I got two GT3 RS. Yeah, they're, they're saw already that one, here. Yeah. I got them already. Purusangwe black one comes on Monday. Mm -hmm. I've got a red one coming next week also. So that's two Purusangwe's. And yeah. then I have a black one coming at the end of the year. We've got some Roma spiders coming. We bought two of those. Um, what else have we got coming? Spectra. Do you, do you get these cars according to like what the client wants? Or do you just... We know what like rents. We know what rents, that's for sure. Plus, we try to keep up with the latest cars. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. got a Revuelto coming first week of April. Sick. So it's a matte green that that'll be ready. We'll be the first to have that as well, probably before the dealership as well. Yeah, spec'd up yourself. Um, from... No, nah, I had to buy it for secondary market. Like okay. you have to buy it already spec'd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I couldn't pick my color. Yeah. Um, but we always want to be the first. Yeah. But whatever I mean, color it is, we don't care. Matt, Matt Green's still option. sick though. <laughs> yeah, Matt, it looks sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you the spec later. Yeah. What else? We have got heaps of cars coming, and then after that, man, it's just cruise mode. Update my cars every two years. Sell mm. the old ones, get the latest model. Yeah. We've got 812 replacement coming in May. They're launching yep. it, getting that. Uh, the new Bugatti replacement of the Chiron, ordering You're that. You're going to replace the Chiron for that? Yeah, with the new one, yes. Yeah. But that one's not going to be for rent. It's going to be my personal car. Is it? Okay. So yeah. the blue one you got now, is that for rent? That's for rent, yeah. Okay. You actually bought that for rent, not yeah. just personal? I bought it for personal use and VVIP clients. Yeah. And for marketing. And if someone really wants it and they're a good client of ours, I'm then happy to give it. it. At yeah. the right price, everything's rentable. Yeah. You know? I'm going to start off the podcast like this, right? Because me and my friends always have phone call conversations. I always get phone calls. So I'm going to describe a phone call to you. And I just want you to say stop the second you think it's, it's a, a wrong idea or something's gone wrong. So it'll be like, Raheem, what's going on? You know what? I've got an idea. I think I'm going to buy a McLaren 720S and rent it out in Dubai. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you stop or right should now. I buy R8 or something like that. Yeah. So they always seem that you know buying a car out here is a good way to make money renting out and all that sort of stuff i'll tell you something about that and this is not to scare away any competition because mm -hmm. people always say that in my comments oh he's scared that people are going to come to the bike we make money and we always fully book my showroom it's got about six cars in here right now mm -hmm. we have a total fleet of 100 it never like 
it's yeah. always empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can only fit 12 cars in here. Yeah. And you always see my showroom on my TikToks. I try to jam pack as many cars as I can. So it looks good for the video. So mm -hmm. whatever I have that's got a book in tomorrow, yeah. I bring it in the showroom. Yeah. Because you can't rent it anyway. The book is the next day. Yeah. But um, I'm not really worried about competition. But at the same time, if you want to buy one car or two cars, you can't make money. Mm. Because you've got to pay, you know, Google ads. You've got to pay insurance. You've got to pay an admin. You've got to pay, um, like, for marketing-wise. You've got to pay, what else is there? Running costs, rent. Like, Ijari, you've got to pay DY, electricity. Yeah. Then, then you've got, like, your own expenses on your car, tires, brakes, maintenance. Yep. You can't really make much money, bro, when you have to pay all those payments on two or three cars. Yeah, it's a volume game because I even yeah. said to them as well, as soon as that car, because 720S, if you're giving it out to anyone and everyone, at some point, it's 100% going to get written off. Yeah. The, someone's going to crash it. All my right? McLarens have been written off. I haven't owned one McLaren yeah. that has not had an accident. That's what I'm saying. Every single and, one has yeah. an accident. And if you only have just that one car, yeah. then you're finished until that yeah. car's back on road. I still haven't been paid since January last year for one of them. Really? Yeah. So what do you do in that sort of that situation? That guy apparently was drink driving. He went to court. The judge ruled out that he wasn't drinking. Yeah. So now I now they've managed to settle me my claim, but I had to wait for the court to finish. Yeah, so yeah, people yeah. don't think that they think oh it's easy rent a car. Yeah, imagine being out of pocket if you've only got three for supercars. For a whole year and a half. For three supercars, one of them's out the whole time. Yeah, you've got two left, paying bills. We'll get you by, no problem. Mm. But I've got there's companies out here that opened recently with big money behind them, crazy money, and they've got 25, 30 cars in their fleet. But go check what's available. Maybe six cars are out. The mm. other 24 are available. Even I met with their manager the other day that owns a different section of the company is like, I don't know what the guys are doing down there. Yeah. It's a separate section. He goes, but they're not pushing cars. He goes, I see you guys, this is from another rental car company. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I see you guys killing it. And then so, I guess just the, when you don't own something and you have no love for it as well. Yeah. Or if you've got an investor or something, there's no, there's no love to it. My understanding here is that a lot of the companies are all doing rent to rent. So some, B2B, someone, correct. Yeah, someone owns the car. Yeah. Don't sure. know who that person is. But for anytime sure. I've got a car, it's through someone who's through someone who's through someone yeah. who's through someone. But so we, we try to eliminate that. That's yeah. why we get every type of make and model that's out there. Yeah. For example, every Ferrari, we pretty much got it. From Roma to 812s to, to F8 to a Portofino. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have every model. So that way, if you want something, we've got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't go elsewhere. Yeah. You know, and um, we, eliminate the, we eliminate the brokers in that way. So, so how much is like yours B2B and B2C? B2B is about 10 to 15% cheaper. Okay. But we don't work with anyone. Oh, we've you only do? our set people because a lot of them tend to play games. They'll mm -hmm. come and say, hey, my client's asking for the deposit back. We give it to the guy, he disappears, and yeah. the client rings us, hey, you have my deposit. We're like, hey, we gave it to the broker. Mm. He's like, no, bro, I didn't approve that. It becomes a problem. Yeah. So we've eliminated all the junk ones, and we've got the VIP brokers and the ones that actually have class and have money, yeah. and that are in it to do, for the long run. But surely they can't do that in Dubai, no? Anything's possible, bro. Mm. The thing is, the guys overseas, yeah. who's he gonna call? Local police, no proof. It becomes like, it's a hard case. Okay, open a case. Yeah. It's going to cost you more to open the case than 5K denim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, 1K Makes pound. Yeah. It's going to cost you more to see a lawyer, bro. Yeah. Don't it's make not no worth sense. it. So I, I get a lot of phone calls. Hey, I rented a car from this company. I got ripped. Can you give me advice? Mm -hmm. I give them my advice, but sometimes you can do a chargeback online. Um, sometimes you can you give a bad review it. or something. Yeah. But how much is that really going to affect them? It's even hard with us because we take deposits. There's some companies out there that take no deposits. Yeah. But those companies obviously take your credit card details and they put a lock on it. So like they, they don't put a block. They actually get pre-authorized to charge whatever they want from your card. Mm. So they, they think, oh, no deposit. They go there and they get a bill when they go back home for 20K. Yeah, so mental. we take 5K, <laughs> we return our deposit. We have no issue with the client. The only time we take a deposit is if he's damaged something or fines, traffic fines. Yeah, yeah, obviously it's going to come out We are of that. more expensive than all the other rental cars yeah. out there. We actually are, 100, yeah. 200 dirham. Some cars, 500 dirham more. But then again, our cars, full PPF. Our cars, very well maintained. Our cars very clean. Uh, yeah, I mean, on the time, fact, yeah. 25, 30 drivers, man. Mm -hmm. It's like ordering a pizza, your car's there. Yeah. No other company does it like us, man. Bro, I mean, coming in here right now, this is almost like car sale showroom. Yeah. The cars are in that immaculate condition. Wait till you see the new one. Yeah, I know. I'm, we're going to talk about that shortly because yeah. that's going to be insane. But that's I mean, the fact crazy, that man. you can keep rentals in this condition, yes. the rentals I've had in the past, being honest, they've got scuffs, curbs, they don't drive straight. I get pissed off when the tracking's off. So when I drove Ferrari last time, the steering wheel's the steering this way. Yeah, we'll and, yeah. Basically, we have two companies that we work with right now until our garage is open, which we're working on. They come on a daily basis. They mm -hmm. check what fleet we have available. They speak with my staff. Is this car available? Is that car available? If they are, they take them and they do a full checkup on my car. Yeah. So it saves my staff doing it. Yeah. They actually do it. They put it on a hoist. They check everything. Yeah. They repair their rims quickly. 
they whatever they feel that is not right in the car and these guys are OCD as well yeah. so it might be a small scuff on the rim that you mm -hmm. probably can't even see we still get it repaired yeah. why? we want it clean we want the customer most of the people that take our cars they're very picky with what they take in yeah. so like you can go around my showroom right now and you find nothing like even that Ferrari yeah, right no, there, I can't see a single mark on the rim. Ferrari at all. No, no marks yeah literally, literally I have a dent guy that comes out does all my dents yep Every, every month he comes a couple of times a month checks what we have sends me the invoice it's not expensive but he just sends me invoices that way I know my cars are getting maintained mm -hmm. you mentioned there earlier that other places may have 30 cars but they've only got 6 cars out right yeah so what actually makes you guys different because you've got 100 cars and you've only got about 6-7 nah, cars sitting here quality is one other people don't have passion for their work mm -hmm. he might not be the owner he might be a worker mm -hmm. and the owner doesn't care he's got a lot of money yeah yeah just think oh I'll open a rental car he just set something up here you gotta be there man. The you gotta be in your business yeah you gotta go there every single day I'm back to back all day and my numbers aren't online anymore I don't talk to much clients anymore like I used to mm -hmm. um, and I'm still busy so imagine like that's how you meant to work yeah these other guys they travel they go clubs they go wherever they want they spend their money they don't care about it there's no passion for them yeah so I've got a passion for cars man I can't see a car damaged I, I, I I get upset, you know? Yeah. I want to dive more into the business shortly, but I want to understand where this all started for you. And I know you've spoken about this a few times as well. <clears> I have in my old podcasts. Yeah. Um, basically, born and raised in Australia. This episode is sponsored by Fireway Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK. With over 100 locations, you definitely have a store near you. The founder of Fireway was on the show not too long ago, and you can get a slice of the action by using the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. Once again, use the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. I came on a holiday in 2018 and I fell in love with the place. Yep. Uh, bumped into a guy renting me cars. Every time I wanted a car, nothing was available. So I started to say, this must be a good business. Guy pushed me. He's like, why don't you come over and open a business? Do something like this. I went back home, didn't think about it. Then eventually I came again. Came again a, a, a few times to Dubai. Yeah. Then I really fell in love. I go, you know what? I'm staying here. Got the vibe Let me buy it. five, six cars yeah. and, a, and a nice home. Yeah. If I make five, 10 grand out of it a week, that's then enough. I, mind, yeah. uh, I could spend that and yeah. I have my cars paid off and I have my home paid off. Yeah. That's a good lifestyle in, yeah. in many in many countries. Did you come you know? here on your own or with family? I came with my family. Um, my brother moved over as well with his family. The yeah. only people left is my two sisters and my mom and dad. Yeah. But they're moving over, inshallah, end of the year. Inshallah. Um, I was just waiting until I get like perf like have it set up perfect here. My younger sister, they're waiting for her to get married. Yeah. Now that she got married, um, she they're all coming up now. So okay, so they're all going to come here. This is the plan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. But well, what did we actually do in Australia? Because I had a car dealership. Yeah. I had a, I had a few salons, uh, ladies' hair salons. I was buying and selling cars from the, the auction. I had construction company and a demolition company. Okay, so you've been an entrepreneur outside of vehicles. Look, for it was... I, oh, wow. Some of them like some of them were failures. Yeah. Like I opened some companies that failed. Yeah. The salon was one of them. I ended up selling and moved on. Uh, construction company was doing well. Now it's a bit harder in, in Australia to make money because everything's going up. Yep. Cost of living's going up. Yep, same with UK. Yeah, so um, I got out at the right time. Yeah. And now I'm in Dubai and I didn't think I'd ever get this far. But man, if I think if you just work and you're consistent and you keep on going, you'll get there. Dreams come true, man. Yeah, you'll get the there. The first time I went to Rolls Royce, I bought a Rolls Royce Dawn brand new from the showroom. Man, like I nearly I had happy tears. It's like I couldn't believe I was in a Rolls Royce, not at an auction. I'm actually yeah. buying it from Rolls Royce. Paid in full, jump in it and drive. Like, I never thought I'd get that far. Imagine where I am now. Yeah. So imagine how I feel now. And yeah, but man. To you now, crazy. that feeling must be a norm now, just buying yeah, a new car. Even That's the Bugatti, I bought it over the phone. Yeah. He called me, he goes, you want it? This is the price. It was a really good deal at the time. I didn't even ask what color it is. I said, okay, send it. I'll take it. He yeah, bring it here at night, drove it in. My staff was, all my staff were clapping and congratulating me. Exciting moment. And now it's that feeling <laughs> dies out, you know? That, that's the problem being in a rental car. Yeah. You no, just don't I've, have that. Yeah. I've got a friend in Birmingham, the exact mm. same thing. Um, he's got a company and once again, you know, the amount of cars he drives all the time to him is just a normal yeah, now. Yeah, it's a normal car. He dra he daily drives his Bugatti yeah. all the time and yeah, it's insane. Yeah, see me, it's not about the, it's the convenience, like, I prefer a four wheel drive to drive, get, go to the gym, you yeah. don't have to worry about the bumper getting scratched every time you go in and out. Yeah. Uh, if I have to pick up my son and, and my, the nanny or whatever, like, I need a three seater or a four seater at least. So I stay in the SUVs, it's just easier for me. It's comfort, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, com I'm comfortable now. Yeah, no, yeah. But um, Bugatti, I do take it out, but not often. I had my fun with it. Yeah. Waiting for the new shape. New shape is going to be sick. New shape's going to be sick because that's going to be a hybrid. I right? had a private view in already. I've oh, is it? it? Yeah, I've seen so it. So you've yeah. seen the I've actual seen the car? Thing, yeah. We, obviously, we can't talk yeah. about that, but yeah. are, you in, are you impressed with it's it? It's amazing, bro. All yeah. I can tell you is, is, yeah, it is a W16 engine mm -hmm. with a Rimac uh, electric motor as yeah, well. Yeah. Yep. 1800 horsepower, uh, 0 to 102.2. Yep. And it's got going doors. Doors go up. 
Okay, so that's it's, interesting. It's the first. Yeah, that is. And that is. Remember this. You see me on the part. That's yeah, how you know I've actually seen yeah, the Yeah, yeah. But guy, he's gonna send you an email after this one. Be like, I made you reveal too much. <laughs> and the rear's got the. Um, I think they're going to reveal it now, any, any day soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the back on the brake lights, it says Bugatti when you hit the brakes. The so it's similar to the what's Mistral. The, what's the limited? Like the Mistral. Yeah, yeah very they similar. released that one, yeah. And the back wheels just stand out at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, come yeah. out a lot. It's a crazy car. New infotainment system. The whole car is different. Everything's different, yeah. The whole thing is different. It's sick. What was your first taste of entrepreneurship, though? Though you set up all these companies. I set when, up a lot and I failed, uh, I failed in a lot. Um, but but I mean, then everything like, that I've done in Dubai, alhamdulillah, has worked. Yeah. I just Absolutely. feel like anyone that comes here and wants to work and has got some passion with them, you can sell hot dogs in Dubai and make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm being honest, If you're man. passionate about it, yeah. It's not just that. Like, if you're actually willing to go to work and commit, like, I, I see everyone making money. Mm-hmm. Everyone that I know has opened the company, they're not complaining. Yeah, that's yeah, no, it's true. Every single you know? person I've met here, all random different yeah. industries. No one's complaining. And they're all making a ton of money. Yeah, no one's Literally. complaining. My friend I mean, owns a watch company. Yeah. He's killing it. My other friend owns a restaurant. He's killing it. I met a guy who sells plastic. He's killing it. That's and what he's I'm killing to it more than anyone else I know, to be yeah. fair. Probably making more money than a lot of people. Yeah. Selling yeah. plastic. Literally it's, making a whole lot of money. It's sky's the limit in this country, man. Yeah. It gives you opportunity that nowhere else gives you, man. Tax free. Uh, Labor's a little bit cheaper than anywhere What's else. What's the tax like in Australia? 47.5, man. Nearly 50%. Personal or, or business. Bus- yeah. So you got VAT. You yeah. got GSTs called there. Yeah. Good services tax. And then you've got the normal tax, man. And then you've got income tax. Like, you just get tax, tax, tax. We yeah. use tax there. Yeah. If you've got a good accountant, though, you can get away with it. But Yeah, even then, though. But even them. then, like, that's why I'm moving over to Dubai as well, because the, the tax in the UK is just a joke. What do you do back home? I just do podcasts oh, all the time. Podcasts, yeah. But alhamdulillah, it's in a place now where I, I need to paid. move to UAE because I allow the tax, man. Yeah, do you you're know what I mean? paid for it, yeah. It's different. But I want to just go into a bit of like examples, if you don't mind, yeah? So this 488 behind you, right? F8. Is that F8? Yeah, yeah F8. sorry, my bad. F8. Yeah. So that would cost how much here? To buy or to rent? To buy. To buy brand new 1.6 mil dirham. Okay, so roughly about 300,000 pound. Yeah. And then how long would it take for you to make your money back on that? Uh, we, I bought it for 1.3 million dirham. Yeah. I rent it for, it used to be 5k a day. Yeah. So that would have been around 220 days, 230 days. But now it's dropped to about 4k a day. I reckon about a year's worth of renting, but like split over two. Yeah. So that's maximum, bad. maximum, maximum 24 months. So that's why you're able to constantly get Correct. new cars because Correct. they're all paying themselves Some off. cars are different, like the Pura Sangwe. Yeah. Let's say it costs you 2.8 million dirham. Yeah. 10K a day, 280 mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. Still a not year, bad though. A year maximum. Yeah. A year and a half yeah, pushing. Yeah, yeah. And the car's still worth 2.5. Yeah. So you make, it's still then you got one. SVRs, for example. You know, you're paying 400K dirham for them and you rent them for a thousand a day. You need 400 days, but they, they go out monthly. Yeah. So the days do go by very fast. Yeah. Um, have yeah, you man. got cars where you just don't even see them anymore because someone's taken them? My Kulunan's been out maybe now 10 to 15 months, man. With and one that, person? One person. And that same client just took out Dawn yeah. and took a Wraith for his wife. So he's got three roles yeah. out monthly basis. He pays us like 250k dirham a month. Bloody hell. I haven't heard. That. He just took those two new. Yeah. He's already had them for about two months. Yeah, so I don't know crazy. when he's going to return. He goes, can you get your boys to stop calling me? Yeah. Have you ever had a client that literally says to you, Ahmed, I know you haven't got this car, but I want it. Buy it and I'll well, take it I had another client that's on a monthly basis. Yeah. We actually sourced the car for him. What color you want? We yeah. know you're taking it for a, like monthly. Mm-hmm. We sourced the car for him. He's like, this is how I want to do business. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. I want to talk to you about your TikTok, right? Because yes. this is where I, pretty, I, I discovered you and I think a lot of people did as well, right? So... That whole strategy of TikTok, because you don't ever see it in Dubai. All the rental companies that I've seen, they don't even have a social media presence at all. So for you to come on and do TikTok and you know, you're the rent the go to place in Dubai, what was your whole strategy behind that? When you first started it, what was at the, the start I didn't want to do it. Yeah. I'm like I didn't want to be on camera and trying to push rentals. Mm-hmm. And then um my my wife pushed me. Yeah. She's like, You should do it. I yeah. think it just changed the game up a little bit. Don't worry about like organic like it's paid ads, let's do some organic ads. Instagram was doing very well already. And I'm like, you know what? Let's try the TikTok. I bring the team out. Uh, first video got like 150,000 views. Yeah. I'm like, Mental. it's good, man. Like we did, the fir- I paid him for the first five videos and all first five videos went a bit viral. Yeah. yeah. Then I thought maybe, you know, he's buying me fake followers or something to make me feel like- yeah, uh, feel good. I feel, feel like it's good. But then I started getting messages from people I haven't spoken to in 20 years. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, my mate's accountant called him. He goes, oh, is your friend in Dubai doing rentals? Like all around the world started messaging mm-hmm. and people like one guy from school that I haven't spoken to in 20 years since primary school yeah. reached out to me he's like remember he used to come to my house play PlayStation uh, Nintendo 64 it was and he's like it's me I'm like damn like this is that's how I knew it was going places yeah, yeah. and then um, it just got viral from there man did you ever have people who 
who you didn't necessarily speak to for a long time and try and contact you for the fame. Man. I still get that now. And what do you do in that yeah, situation? People say that they're my cousin. People say that they're my friend. Yeah. I have people rock up here to my admins. Oh, I'm his cousin. And I come out, they just want to say hello. Yeah, you know, Le- like, I Le- don't know these guys. Bro, you know? Lebanese people have big families, yeah, man. You can have yeah. any cousins you oh, don't even true, know. It's true though, we have, I have 500 plus on my side. Yeah, what? My, mom has, uh, my mom's got 16 brothers and sisters. Yeah. And my dad's got 13 brothers and sisters and they've got kids, kids, yeah. kids, kids, kids. That's what I'm saying. So when they come over sometimes, I'd be like to my mom back in the day, I was like, mom, who's this? She'd be like, that's your auntie Hala's daughter's daughter. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's my first cousin's daughter's daughter, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who they are. You don't even know that. That's oh, what I'm saying. Okay, fair enough. The family's so big, you wouldn't it's even know. too big, man. That's what I'm saying. If they're coming over here, next yeah. f- first question is, boss, Yo, what's the discount that you're yeah. going to give me because we're family? Yeah, 100%. Sort of and yeah. If not, uh, Arabs, especially Lebanese people, even if you're not family, oh, he's my cousin or he's my mate or whatever. Yeah. And they give us a family discount. So I do cater for them. I always give discounts, man. People that are good to me, I look after. Yeah, you know, people 100%. that are just rude and that, I don't help. Yeah, you know. Them. How do you pick your client base because I'm pretty sure you wouldn't just give the car to anyone and look everyone, right? uh, it's very hard to choose we give the cars to maybe 90% of the, whoever that inquires 90% but there is some that we find shady like people tell us oh send us a payment link for example I want to block my reservation mm-hmm. I'm like okay but I need your documents if they don't send documents you know they're probably using a shonky credit card or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. so it does happen man we've had it before 25k um, bank called us and said that the money is fraudulent money we had to refund the money but the guy already took the product they took the car yeah. so we're out of pocket that time so we do take precautions. If you took the car, then what? By the time you realized it was fraud, did the car come back? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise you could have just yeah. told them there and then, yo, like, what are you doing sort of thing? Otherwise, like, if, look, we got their documents anyway. Then that's why when my boys go to deliver the cars, we request the documents live. Yeah. And we match it with the person and we have all these documents. We take his entry stamp. So we look at his passport when he entered. So we write that down as well. So if it does come up as fraud in the future, mm-hmm. give that to the police. They know exactly who it was. Yeah. You know? Is it true that you guys have the ability to block someone from flying out of the country if they've it messed used up. To, it used to be like that. Yeah. That rule has changed in 2022. Yeah. The only way you can get someone to travel ban now is through court when it comes to rentals. Yeah. You have to open a court case, which can take a couple of days yeah. to open the case and, and get approval well. and then send it. Unless they've done something stupid, then the police have your back and they can put a travel, travel yeah, ban. Put, travel Basically, it travel. happened the other day to us. A uh, guy was doing donuts in the McLaren. Mm-hmm. They put it on social media. Police seen it. They got into trouble. Yeah. And that guy, uh, they wouldn't let him fly. Yeah. He tried to leave uh, one of the airports and they grabbed him and they said, look, you got to pay this fine. Reckless driving, endangering people's lives. Yep. All that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah. Police here are on it, man. I'll give you a quick story, right? So last year when I was here for New Year's Eve, one of my friends took out an Audi RSQ8. I can't remember which company it was from, but he took out an RSQ8. We went to Half Desert Road. And exit 55. Say exit 55. Exit 55. Man, yeah, that place. As soon as I see my car there, I know what they're doing. Yeah. So he wasn't speeding. He didn't do a drag strip. He done donuts on the on like one of the roundabouts. Roundabouts, yeah. And um, which everyone does. There's yeah. no one there. Yeah. No police there. No nothing like that. That's what you think. That's what we think. Yeah. Mm. And the next you know, out of nowhere, uh, firstly an Emirati came uh, and he was doing donuts and all that stuff as well. So he was joining in, and then out of nowhere, a police car just pulls up. So we're like we can see for miles we couldn't even see them coming at all so they went after the Emirati first and my friend drove off so I think my friend thought he got away that's a bigger problem yeah that was a bigger problem because then when we checked on the uh, police app thing uh, I think there was a I think in fines it was up to 20,000 dirhams something like that something crazy so last thing you do man is is stuff the police around in Dubai yeah look it's a very good country it's a very safe country and we don't like people coming around here to break the rules yeah um, especially when it's not your car, man. Like, mm. like these guys rent cars, they do donuts in them. I see it. One, it's not your car. It's not your dad's car. Your dad didn't pay for it. You didn't pay for it. Have respect for someone else's items. Plus, have respect for the law. Like, it's a very safe country. If you think you can do it and get away with it, then that means everyone can do it and get away with it. And then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Mm. So the, the way they enforce things here, I, I respect that, man. Even sometimes our cars get impounded. Yeah. Stays at the police station for 10, 15 days, which you can't even pay to get it out. Because there is some impounds that you can pay to get out. Yeah. Some of them, it depends. If the police see you do it physical, they're not going to let you take it. One guy was revving my engine in the, revving the engine in the Brabus in Jumeirah. Yeah. And he was revving it that loud at the traffic light. Police stopped him. It took my car for 30 days. 30? 30 days. I couldn't get it out. Yeah. And I had tried ringing my friends that maybe know someone in the yeah, police. Yeah, that, hey, yeah. please help us. We're a business. Yeah. Because guess if someone else calls us from your company, we're going to keep it for another 30 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's like crazy. they wanted to teach us a lesson. So we told our clients, don't rev the engine. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because we're, we're at a loss. Mm. But we charge the client. That's his problem. Charge him. So what, you know? the deposit yeah, we charge him. Yeah. Deposit yeah. is 5K. 
Plus, it was 30 days off the road. We charged him 20 days. So in these instances here, yeah, this is what I want to know because... So if you're going to be stupid with one, one of the cars yeah. and something happens, your responsibility, Yeah, man. you're responsible 100%. But then don't you see the people that are hiring these cars are are there to, you know, maximize their time and the money they spent on this 100%. car. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't mean go do donuts. Yeah, no, it doesn't mean go do yeah, donuts. But I mean, you know? you're bound to have it right in this game of yeah. people taking Look, it happens piss. a lot, man. We, we, get, we have impounds every day. Even yesterday, one of our clients... That rents a lot of us. He was endangering the public with his with the Bentley GTC. Yeah. I think I don't know what he done. Maybe drifting or something. Um. And then after that, uh, police called us. They blocked our file in the RTA. Yeah. So we can't renew registrations. We cannot do oh, nothing. Really? They, they go. We want to know the driver's details. Yeah. We want him to come and see us. Yeah. And then we rang the guy. We said, Look, you got to go to the police station. They want you there. Mm-hmm. He's gone there. He goes. Didn't even speak to him. He goes. Give me your license. He goes. You suspended three months. Get out. Yeah, so well, he lives here or? Yeah, lives here, lives here. I told him yeah. to, just, yeah. yeah. If it's a tourist, they'll probably give you a fine. Can't do much because you're not from here. Yeah. But man, if it's something so serious, you can probably end up in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you don't want to end up in jail. Here. And at the same time, man, you don't want to be doing something stupid. You lose control, you hurt someone, mm. get a jail, man. Yeah, no, 100%. And people got to be responsible. Is endanger someone else's 100%. life. 100%. It's a sad thing. Yeah. And that's what's sad. The other sad thing about these cars as well, because... Yes, you know, you, you make someone may rent it, get excited, thinking they've got it under control, but one little issue, one traction loss, and they've wiped out the car. Thing is, a lot of these people have never driven supercars in their life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're young, they get excited, yeah. music, adrenaline, they drive fast, they yeah. get excited, boom, they, yeah. they hit the curb, lose control. I've seen that happen too many times. Yeah, man. we we live in a generation right now where there's a whole lot yeah. of millennial millionaires, as I like to call them. Right, yeah. people made it from crypto, crypto trading, crypto kids. Yeah, all that's that what we sort call of, it. Yeah, that's kids, what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, you call them what? Sorry, crypto kids. Yeah, crypto kids. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you must get a whole load of those kids trying to rent a lot of them. They're, they're good clients, to be honest. They spend yeah. a lot of money. They probably pay. But at the yeah. same time, it's 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 risky. The, yeah, I mean, they pay. The risk is higher, but the mindset is still that kiddish mindset. And it's easy money. And it's so easy they don't money. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh. I'll pay it. Okay, I'll pay it. Who yeah. cares? If I damage, I'll pay it. But they're not going to see the other flip side of things at all. Forget like, the honest, money. You can injure someone or you can hurt yourself. And then you go to jail. Yeah. You know, then you're f- really fucked. Exactly. Mm. Well, alhamdulillah, bro, you said you've got over 100 cars now. Alhamdulillah, man. And we were speaking off camera before about like the next things, the next things that you're going to yes. do, right? So let's talk about that. So you said this showroom here Basically, is- this showroom, our lease ends in November. Yeah. Uh, we're leaving because we've expanded. Yep. This is only 6,500 square feet. Yeah. I've just taken 80,000 square feet. Was you here the whole time, by the way? I've been here for three years. Before that, I was in Business Bay. I had 30 square meters. So I had 300 square feet. It was me, my admin that's still with us, yeah. and one of my drivers. Where were you putting all the cars? Um, I had a hotel. So yeah. we had 10 car spaces. Yeah. Five up, up the top and five in front of the hotel. Yeah. But at the same time, they were getting damaged by the sun in summertime. I used to have my flags outside next to the car. And I started from there. And mm. I grew so now my cousin is there. He took over. Yeah, he's Which got hotel eleven. Is this? Uh, Business Bay <sighs> Golf Court Hotel. So now he's um he's called Furious Rent a Car. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. I know exactly which hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was just, staying in Golf Court last week. Yeah, yeah. that's that's my cousin's. Okay. Uh, he so, took that's my old shop. Yeah, same furniture, everything. Yeah, that's my old shop. So I'm doing a documentary now. Yeah. Um, of, of my growth. Um, we're gonna set up a YouTube channel as mm-hmm. well. We have got a podcast room happening as well there. Yep. Um, eighty thousand square feet. It's huge. We're going to be official partners with a few big brands yep. when it comes to modification, um, even wheels and customization stuff, leather upholstery, changing colors, uh, faded paints, so you're wrapping, doing a full PPF, one-stop shop, everything. Dipping gold. Uh, you want black chrome? We can do black chrome. We're going to yeah. be doing some carbon fiber. We're going to have like a manufacturing place. That's at the back and at the front. It's going to be a car sales showroom mm-hmm. and a rental car showroom. They're split into two. So how come you're expanding into all of that rather than... You, because you, it's a one-stop yeah. shop and I'll be... And originally, I'm, I'm already my own customer. Yeah. So I'm already spending a couple of hundred K a month on maintenance of my vehicles. So I thought I'd do it in-house. So I'm already my own customer. I'm already bringing some money. Whether I break even at the end of the year, at least I'm saving money. Yeah. You know, Saving so, money for this business. So yeah. if I'm saving 200 K a month on average... Yeah. Yeah, it's still nearly one mil a year, like an Aussie, yeah. one mil Aussie a year. But the one stop, one stop shop, is that something you've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to do that. Because you man. seem like you've I got love my cars, cars and every car that I buy for my fleet, I go and change the color on it, yeah. or I go change the interior on it. Because some of the cars I'm buying, I already specced because of the new regulations, and some places don't have cars and there's no stock available. Yeah. And like uh, Ferrari don't sell to rent a car, Lamborghini don't sell to rent a car anymore. Mm. So they've restricted it. So we buy them from Europe, we buy them from outside. Yeah. So when they get here, you're buying someone else's spec. Maybe he's done red interior on, on blue outside. Yeah, and it don't make is, sense. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll change the interior or change the exterior. Yeah. So I save money there, and I can start doing it for my friends and, and people that are in our supercar groups. Yeah. And 
outsource to other garages as well if they want interior done or they've got something they can't do. Mm-hmm. We're going to have the best of the best. I always hire the best. Um, we, we try to per- to make everything perfect, some OCD. So I think that will happen in the new shop as well. Um, I'm excited for it. It's going to be something crazy. going to be a big operation, yeah. big overheads as well. But I'm up for everything, man. I always take risks. I don't care. It doesn't work. I maintain my own cars. I'm happy. It works. We have to move, get a bigger location. Uh, if one of them don't work, we close one of them down and expand either the rental or expand the showroom. Yeah. We work it out as we go, man. Because, I mean, if you've got 100 cars, not that they're all going to be there anyway, but they can all be there. Yeah. Selling the cars as well. You've got that side of Car things. Car sales on the right side. So even even our own cars we can sell. Yeah. So every two years when we have to renew them, we can throw them in there. Plus, if there's a consignment car or two from the friends, if they want to sell their cars, we yeah. put it there. We're making money. You know, so it's, it's crazy. What, what does a sale on a supercar that's been hired look like? Because I can imagine towards the end of the term of when you get rid of it, the mileage us, is probably a lot higher. mileage will be high. But with us, we actually get them very, like we go over them. We change the bushes. We change the suspension. We do a service, a full service. We check it. We get it checked at garages. Yeah. At the moment, that's what we do now. So since we don't have our own garage, we do a full report on it and then repair everything on that car. Yeah. Put it on the market. We explain to the client, look, it was an X rental. We have no issue selling our cars, man. We yeah. sold all our cars. How many miles would you say the car would have done in the two years then? Well, on average, we sell them around 50,000 Ks. That's not bad. Yeah, 50, 50 to 70. I mean, I say there's nothing but for, for a supercar, super car, it's high. Yeah. It's yeah. hard. You lose a lot of value. Yeah. So people don't take that into consideration as well on some cars they buy. And uh, some cars, if you're buying them brand new, for example, I bought an MC20. 1.2 mil, yeah. brand new. Um, today's market's worth 800, so I already lost 400 on it. Yeah. For example, by the time it's got high mileage, and you want to sell it, you're getting 500 for it. So there's some cars that you actually can lose a lot on, and so the rental that you pushed it for sometimes it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, it's not worth it. At you got to buy certain cars that guarantee you money and guaranteed sales. What car have you bought that you've lost money on all round in terms of selling it? It didn't do well in terms of rentals. I think the MC20 was pretty bad. But at the end, I had a good client took it monthly. Yeah. Took it for the last five months straight. Yeah. And then it got totaled. The, the flood happened flooded, in Dubai. Yeah, I saw that flooded. on TikTok. I think it was, yeah. um, that was one of our bad cars. But I guess we were asking too much at the time. So we we're asking four or 5K a day for the car. Mm. Car's only worth 1.250 to buy. So like we get a Lambo for a little bit less and push it for three or three five. So yeah. I think... We were asking too much at the time, so we wasn't pushing it. Yeah, still and done 15, yeah. 20 days a month, but well, with the with the Maserati, I don't think they've got that the brand, that brand presence, the name, bro. People don't come I here to buy. Oh, I got a, I got a Maserati. Maserati. It's like, bro, I want a Lambo. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I want a Straight, Ferrari. I want a Hurricane. Nah, man, I enjoy I want an Maserati. Aventador. That, but but the way it drives is amazing. Yeah, the I MC20 imagine. drives nice. Very clean imagine. car, very smooth. But I think the people that rent these cars don't even necessarily worry they about the care. driving. They don't care. They want the names they, for yeah, Instagrams, the name. for, Instagrams want, for yeah, Snapchat. The flex. It's the flex, 100%. Yeah. It's the Dubai flex. What girl's going to pop up to them? Oh my God, you got a Maserati, yeah. have you? <laughs> it's not yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> a Dubai I mean? flex, I guess. Yeah. I want to know, yeah. You know, you're talking about modifying cars and all that yeah. sort of stuff. What's the amount of money, what's the most amount of money you spent on a car after to modify? To modify. The Mansuri Kulnan. How much was that? And uh, what's that just the like? headlights alone cost me 25K. I put Swarovski in the headlights. Flipping out. Yeah. So I've got Swarovski crystals yeah. custom made. They've stripped my whole headlight down. Then you've got the faded, you got the faded paint. you got the interior. you got the uh, gold flakes in it. Like it cost us, that car cost me a lot. Doing that, does it actually increase the rental price? It's not that, man. I want to be unique. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's about, yeah, but it does increase the rental price, of course. Yeah. But at the same time, it's being unique. You know, you want it, we've only got it. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. the only ones that have it. Oh, there are a lot of people. Is that the one that's half black and half blue? Yes, yes, okay. the one, the yeah, faded makes one. Sense. Makes sense. So like, uh, if I have anything today, I don't think I have anything today, but like, um, most of them are out, man. That's yeah. out, 7,500 a day. Same guy again. The guy that takes it monthly. Yeah, He's yeah, taking yeah. it for 10 days, 50. Don't call me. Keep it with me. Oh, okay. Keep it with you me. got good clients. Yeah. So what are you actually doing now? Because obviously you said in the beginning of the podcast that you were basically doing one-to-one relationships with customers. I was still doing it all that up until last month. Up until last month? Yeah. Only last month? Only last month I stopped. So man. what made you want to I was even that? still dealing with clients on the deposit refunds. Yeah. Still dealing with clients on uh, inquiries. Um, then the thing is my phone gets thrashed all day from telemarketing. Marketing companies ringing me. Mm-hmm. I just get, and you don't know who it is, so you answer. Yeah. Uh, because my number was around for three, four years on the rental market. So yeah. I still get harassed all day with my time. And then I... I'm working on the new place mm-hmm. with the plans, architects, engineers. Oh, so well, you're building from scratch. Everything. Yeah, man, the whole yeah. thing. It's, it's, a, it's a whole brand new building. It's a whole yeah, block. So when's that going to be so, ready? Uh, 1st of August is the grand opening. Yeah. Uh, 1st of July, should get the keys. Yeah. So I've got one month of trial and error, seeing if everything works properly. Um, so I'm working there right now and obviously meetings all day. You know, I do podcasts, I do my TikToks. Yeah. Um, trying to spare time with the family. Like there's sometimes like my parents, bro, I spoke to them today for the first time in like four or five days. Yeah. Usually I used to speak to him every day, but I'm just being busy, man. Super busy. I go to the gym in the morning, try to get that out of the way. Keeps me like it keeps me sane, keeps me 
alert and ready for work. And um, is it a challenge balancing work life, family very, life? Very, very, very hard, man. Yeah. That's why I need to sort of slow down. At least have a day off. I don't have a day off. I'm seven days at work, man. Yeah. That's like even saying. if I'm not working, I might still come in though. Like it's still part of my habit that I have to go to the shop every day. That's just because it's your business, isn't it? Yeah, you work so hard yeah. on it that That's you want to be there all the time. Yeah, 100%. But then do you think it's ever going to get to the point where you think, okay, cool, I actually, like for right now you said you've taken a step back from dealing with customers directly, but do you think we'll ever get to the point where you take a step back from the business just so you can have time to reflect, chill uh, with the family? The only time I get to chill with family is when I go overseas, which is every year, June, July. Mm. When it's hot, too hot here, yeah. I travel to Greece, I travel to Lebanon, I travel to UK, I travel wherever it's possible. I go two weeks, come back yeah. for a week, then go again for two weeks, come back. I try to get that out of my system, but I haven't, but I'm still on my phone. Yeah, I'm still, I jump in the pool or I jump in the beach. I come out, jump on my phone, reply, put it down, jump back in the beach. Mm. I don't have a full day where I can, you know what, relax properly. It doesn't happen. In the times when the byway is too hot, barely anyone comes here between- yeah, We were super busy period. last year, man. Really? We were super, usually we're like 70% capacity. Yeah. Like 70% is out. Last year, man, it was so different, man. There was no off season for us. Some cars didn't even get a chance to maintain them. Really? So we struggle now. I thought it was a complete opposite where people nah. in Dubai, they even leave. and People start dropping tourists. the prices to 2K for a hurricane, one five for a hurricane. Yeah. We kept our prices up and we were still fully still booked. flying out. Yeah. yeah. What was I like? guess it's like, we have monthly clients too. Mm. So we're already like half our fleet is probably already out yeah. to our regulars and stuff. Then you don't have much cars left to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a bit easier, you know? Yeah. And it's a, uh, uh, it's the name out there, man. We, we've got a big brand here. So everyone knows anyone comes to Dubai, go to luxury supercar rentals. They come to us. Look, you got a great brand, you got a great business going on, but I know every business comes with its nightmares. Yeah. Now, I could just think of one, right? And that's cars getting hit. That's a hundred percent. And people think, oh, don't worry, you got insurance. I'm struggling with insurance at the moment. Yeah. Because they don't understand profit and loss ratios. You know, yeah, if you're paying them four million a year, but you've had five claims, which is seven million a year, you're not a good client to them. Mm. They kick you out or yeah. they up the percentage. For example, you're paying three percent per year, okay, now you're paying six. So if you're paying them three million a year, now you're paying them six million a year. Yes, you made some money along the way with the accidents or whatever. It, it it's, doesn't work like that, bro. Do you have to approve the type of cars you get now with the insurance beforehand? <sighs> no, no, no. We buy whatever we want. Everything gets insured, but at the right value. Yeah. But the thing is, they, they, we're struggling, man. A lot I'm, of supercars yeah. are having accidents in Dubai. Yeah. So it's not only us. So most of the insurance companies are struggling. Yeah. They don't really want to insure supercars anymore. Mm -hmm. They're mainly focused on SUVs and maybe some sports cars. But a profile like us, we're too big. So we're bound to have more accidents than anyone else. Yeah. So we're at high risk to them. High risk, yeah. But um, we've got good insurance right now and we've negotiated terms and alhamdulillah, man, everything's yeah. okay. Because I see something like the 911 GT3 RS, which you got there, you got yeah. two of them. Yeah. And Porsche made that car, the way I look at it, it's a track car, yeah. but it's just got a number plate on it. Yeah. So something like that in the wrong hands and they don't know what they're doing, they don't know how to drive, that's our last GT, claim right there. The GT3, the blue one got totaled. Oh, really? Yeah, about three months ago. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. We've copped a few losses, man. Yeah, so People happened, think it's bro. fun and glory. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. a hard business to go into. Mm. And, and then again, we're not here to scare away competition. Countries for everyone. There's 3,500 rental car companies here. There's a big competition. There's like 200 or 300 luxury car rentals in Dubai. Um, Did you anticipate the business to be like this when you started? The, the only challenge we get, man, a lot is clients or but I didn't get my deposit last time back from other companies. So you have to try win them over and explain to them, hey, we have a showroom. We ain't running away anywhere. Come see the cars for yourself. We'll give you a receipt. Um, whatever you want to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. That's how we do it, you know? Well, I'm, say I'm saying in a way of when you came here and decided to do supercar rentals, yeah. did you think, okay, this is going to be great and all that sort of stuff? And looking I thought at it's it now, easy. You just buy four or five cars, rent them, you get paid and every, everyone's happy. Yeah. But I, I learned the lessons along the way, man. I started to go through the hurdles one so, by one and I started to fight them one by one. So what I'm asking is if you could go back into that time where you came to the buyer to decide- Would I do business? rentals again? Yeah. Look, uh, I don't regret a day I did. I love the rental business. I love the action. I love the drama. I love the headaches. We actually strive it. If it's just the day's going smooth, it's, it's, it's odd. Yeah, we yeah. look at each other in the office, it's like it's too smooth. So we like the action in a way, but at the same time, in terms of business, that's why I'm going into the showroom now. It's a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. You have a worker, I can be in Greece on an island chilling. Yep. The worker will ring me, boss, I have someone on the Ferrari. Okay, what's our cost? 1.3, what's he offering? 1.5, okay, sell. Mm. He closes up, cashes the money, gives the accountant, banks it, closes the shop, you know, the whole night and I have to be harassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where in this business is 24 hours, deliveries, People from the airport, I get phone calls because people are using our name on Google ads, yeah. ringing me, hey, where are you? 
we're at the airport. I haven't received my car. We already paid you guys. I'm like, hold on a minute. Who are you calling? They'll tell me the name. I'm like, that's not us. Okay, They're using our Google of ads. Going yeah. On. yeah. So like, um, you get irre- irrelevant phone calls, breakdowns, batteries not starting. They leave the battery or like you know something on in the car. Yeah. Uh, pop tires, a puncture, a whole lot of trip, uh, someone hit the curb, a whole lot more, yeah. You know, a couple, one or two drink driving matters before, yeah. Like it just carries on, man. And that's the same versus, for example, selling supercars. It's just literally buy yeah, the car, come in, sell it not to just supercars, customer. luxury cars. They luxury come in, cars. take it for a test drive. You like it? We give them warranty. They buy it. Every everyone's happy. See you exactly, later. Yeah. Where in this business, man, it's imagine all your fleet out. Yeah. You've booked the SVJ. It breaks down on you. What am I meant to give you if all my fleet is out? Mm. It's a stress thing. You have a fight with the client. What do you do in that situation? Man, it happens. And unfortunately, it does happen. I can't say it doesn't happen. We either refund them their money if we have no car available, or if we have something that's less value, we give it to them and refund them the difference. If we have no cars at all, and then I might have to outsource a car from a very close company that we probably work with in the past. Mm-hmm. But that's very rare. We don't want to. Because if they, if they have an accident in their car, they're going to sue me for whatever they want. Yeah, and I can't yeah. come and tell you, hey, bro, I want 300K because this company wants 300K. Yeah. I'll upset my client and I'll have a fight, bad relationship with the with company. That, yeah. So I try to avoid that. Avoid that, yeah. But um, it does happen. I'm not going to lie. Outside of the car world, what do you do to... At the end of the day, you're an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. I know you've probably still got your fingers in all different pies. Yes, 100%. So outside of cars, what do you do? In terms of work or in terms of hobbies? Hobbies, investments, work. Investments, property. Yeah. 100%. Dubai's the place to be. I got so many... We, we buy so many off-plan properties. We flip them, we sell them. Um, we renovate as well. Mm-hmm. We build. I'm building the house right now. So um, are you doing this as a company or just as like I'm doing it as income? a as an extra income slash company. Yeah. And then um, we set up a real estate company. We're gonna have the office in the new showroom. Yeah. Um, so we flip a lot of off plan properties. We make some good money on them. And uh, what else do I do, man? Hobbies. You know, I just like to chill with the boys. Yeah. You know, I love my food. I love to go out and eat, try different places. Yep. We we'll go to cinema, watch a good movie with the boys. I'm not into clubs and stuff. Mm. Only when the celebrities come through, I go with them to the club for their show or whatever. Yeah. I like to watch some comedy shows. I seen Russell Peters last time he was here. Kevin Hart, every time he comes. Like I try to watch some comedy shows and then I try to travel. Yeah. I want to see the world. To see the world as much that's, as That's my main hobby. I yeah. like to travel and see different places and try different things. Going back to the point of the Dubai, you know, property market, right? I need some education on this because from what I know, property market in Dubai is like the crypto market, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's never gone down, man. Last four, I've been here five years now and there's nothing gone down. Has it not? Zero. Everyone keeps saying to me, it's so volatile and stuff. No. They say that, but last five years, bro, proven records. Yeah. Is there on the internet. Was, Check the yeah. data. There's nothing. It might reduce slightly or the prices are too high right now. I understand. Like they're asking for, the price they're asking for today for an off-plan property is something that will be worth when it's finished. Yeah. They're asking for it now. Yeah. So you don't know what's going to happen in three years, but that's like with anything and anywhere in the world. But right now, man, the last four or five years that I've been here, nothing has gone down. But here's my not other thing. Set, not well. rent, yeah. not buy, man, nothing. Even fuel goes up. Yeah. But my other thing as well, right, is off plans. So you buy an off-plan and then Dubai is constantly, constantly building. So you buy an off-plan tomorrow, Next month there's another off plan. Next month and they're all launch, within the launch, same sort of launch, vicinity. Launch, 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 launch. I agree. So then how can so you, you got to buy branded? Yeah, you got to buy something branded. That's the best to go. Yep. It depends well, what you like kind of investment you want. You want it depends where you want to go. If you want to go high end mm-hmm. and attract high end customers, you're looking at 20, 30, 40 million properties or yep. 100 million. Then you got the mid range. Then you got the base. Base is always JVC, JLT, uh, th- those ways or out a bit. Yep. But anything close to the coastal line is always a good buy because there's no more space. That's exactly what I was thinking so, as well. Or downtown, no more yeah. space. Business Bay, there's not much space left. So JBR, if you buy in those Pudera areas, or, they're, they're bound to go up. Yeah. If you start going out towards the desert ways, yeah. man, of course, there's going to be plenty yeah, of launches. Building there, they yeah. are going to make money, but in the long term, very yeah. long term, I won't go near them. I went to a launch. When was it? I think it was in November. And they're launching a place called Uptown. Uptown, so, so social. I know which one it is. Yes. Uptown JLT. Yeah, so Hellington. I was looking at that and I was thinking they're very expensive for what they are yeah. off plan. And what's that going to do to the rates of downtown? And especially now there's there's other areas around that area where they're going to build up as well. There's heaps of properties, heaps of opportunities. District 1's a very good project. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're buying the villas at 9 million dirham, yeah. selling them at 12, 13 per pop yeah. within six months, within 10 months. That's crazy. They just got to climb. Yeah. Now, they've, now they're still going up. Mm-hmm. So now the new launches from fact, like from the from the developer starting at 11. They used to be 7, 7 million. Mm. So we used to buy them at resale at nine. So the guy will make two million on us, but then we'll still make another three or four. Yeah. Um, those days are over. Mm-hmm. Unless if you buy in now, quick flip, whatever. Golf Place, for example, Dubai Hills used to be 
six million off plan, seven million dirham off plan. Yep. Now you can't buy one under seventeen million. So Crazy. if you bought five or ten, you Your, kill the man. Hundred million, yeah. fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> Literally done. One done here. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of uh, property is a very good market in Dubai, man. Yeah. I remember they offered me Dubai Island. Um, what the world? Jumeirah Bay Island. Sorry, Jumeirah Bay Island. Amalfi townhouses, four million dirham, between four and seven million off plan in 2019. Mm-hmm. I didn't buy them. Today's market, 30 million. Do I didn't know. I thought they were island. I thought you had to catch a boat to it. I was yeah, still yeah, new to yeah, Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do my research. So I bought in Amar Beachfront and I bought in downtown. I flipped both. I doubled my money anyway. So Amar I made good money, yeah. but I would have made five times the money. More. There, but yeah. it is what you learn and live and learn. Yeah. How do you seek for opportunities now? For opportunities now, man, um, I have good agents that I work with. Yeah. And uh, I know pretty much I know every single project that's out there. Mm-hmm. Like the last week they launched uh, Wadi Villas, the week before Lamborghini ones. Like I know the prices per square foot, how, how to, you got to calculate the area. Um, I learned a lot with the real estate game. Yeah. And that's where I use my money. So I make that money from there. I throw it in cars and buy back in. Not just the real estate though, but just in, in general, seeking opportunities is something entrepreneurs do on a daily basis. You gotta know what they need. You gotta know what, what's a need in Dubai, for example. Yeah. You know? You gotta know what you wanna get into. Yeah, like, uh, there's a lot of functions, for example, that happen. Yeah. People need suits. Go open up a shoot, uh, sorry, a suit, suit company where they come to you, tailor make it for you, take your size at your place, give them the extra mile, you'll make money. Yeah. But you've got to create a brand from all these things, yeah. right? So here's what I'm going to ask you. You've built an incredible, incredible brand around yourself and around the business. So what's some sort of brand secrets you can give to myself or the audience for just how to build a brand in the best way and make it the cleanest way as well? Uh, of course, when, you, when, you, when you're building a brand, it always comes down to quality. Most things is quality. Mm. And um, like in anything, you go to a restaurant, they serve quality food, you're gonna go back. You're gonna go there, get served rubbish, you're not gonna go back. Yeah. And that name stays in your head for the rest of your life. Like, mm. oh, no, I'm not going there anymore. And if it's good, you're gonna recommend your friends. Mm. That's one. Uh, brand has to be catchy. So you, with our brand, it's luxury supercar rentals. It's automatically, it tells you what you want. Yeah, it tells it's luxury exactly supercar it rentals. Google. It's good for Google SEOs. Yeah. It's Everything. good for marketing. Um, it's straight to the point. What are you looking forward to in the future? Aside from the new place? Man, after these new places, I wanna sort of get up and running to the perfection. Then I sort of want to retire, man. Really? Yeah. That's going to be a young retirement. Yeah, then. right. Young retire. I can retire right now if I want. Do you I'm think comfortable. You, do you think you could? I don't actually think I'll retire, but I just want it to be running itself. Yeah. Where I'll be visiting every day, going from garage to garage, showroom to showroom, checking all that. Then I want to put my money in properties, mm-hmm. start concentrating more in the property segment, because like you can make a shitload of money without working for it. Yeah. You know? Would you ever sell this business? I had been offered a very big number mm-hmm. recently. Then I've been offered by someone from Saudi, one of the royal family guys there, reached out to me on Instagram. They wanted to open up in Saudi. Uh, I had a guy from Miami message me. So I've had opportunities out there, but I'm too busy here. I can't keep up. So I haven't refused them. I've put them on hold. Yeah, but then essentially you could do like a franchise model, no? Yeah, I've put them on hold. I think is I won't franchise to anyone yeah. in case they ruin the image of the brand. Mm, Unless yeah. if I know that the guy's really trustworthy, he's got serious money behind him and he wants to really do something, I'll, I'll, I'll probably consider doing something in I'm Saudi or Miami be, yeah. or Qatar or something like that in the GCC. Because they're lacking that there. Yeah. In Saudi, is a big thing now. Everyone's moving, a lot of people moving to Saudi to Riyadh as well. Especially, yep. So, and they've got no supercars there. Plus, um, Qatar, I had one of the guys from Qatar who does vlogs. He was here the other day. He goes, you're an inspiration. He came to thank me of like my success and all that kind of stuff. He goes, you guys, you guys put rental cars, like supercar rentals on the map for the GCC. I started laughing. Like, I, I like when people come in. Like, yeah, it's I'm true. a humble dude, but you know, yeah, yeah, and, and I told him like, I really appreciate you coming. We did a video together and he's like, I got to do that. People know me in Qatar. He's like, people know you. He goes, everyone talks about you. Everyone watches your videos. Like, it's crazy. I felt like, you know, yeah, you, first time it hit me, to be honest, man, I rocked up to Greece. Yeah. I get out of the plane. I jump in, I'm going to jump in the van. The guy gets me, oh, you're the TikToker guy. <laughs> and I looked at my, my missus and I'm like, Fuck, man, the people know me in, in Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, then I started to realize everywhere I was going, my people were stopping me in the city. People, you're you're the guy, you're the car guy, you're this, you're yeah. that. Some people call me the car guy, you know, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the first time ever, the first sort of bit of fame I had was the valet parking at the Palm in mm-hmm. the Fillmore. Yeah. The two valet guys, I think the Indian guys, they came up to me and said, Hello, boss, can I take a photo? I know you're from TikTok. Oh, is it? So I'm like, <laughs> Oh, shit, man. So people do see my videos. When you was know? this? When was the first time you, like, actually I started using fame? TikTok 2022, November. Okay. So was it soon after that? Basically? Yeah, it was probably one month after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the morning. like, oh my God, you're the TikTok guy. Yeah, Can we yeah. take a photo? I'm like, you know okay. Yeah. That was the first time I ever took a photo with someone. I felt weird. Yeah. You know? And I, like, bro, I remember the first time I felt fame. I'd done a podcast with Andrew yeah. Tate. 
that next three months after that, yeah. everywhere I went, it was just like, well, can I get a picture of you? Can I do well, this? Well, right now, there's a guy inside my office. He gets me CEO cast. He goes, I oh, know he's massive in the UK. Oh, is it? To be honest, I've <laughs> seen, one, UK I've or? seen one, or, one or two of your podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this guy knows what he, like, I like your podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. I didn't think it was that big. Yeah. And he gets me inside. He goes, man, CEO cast is in your showroom. What's he doing here? I go, we're doing a podcast together. It's like, do you know how big he is in the UK? <laughs> yeah, that's sick. <laughs> where is he from? UK or? Josh is from the UK. Well, I don't know where he's from in the UK. Yeah, he no, comes and shoot, like, he used to be my client, come and rent cars. He's here on a holiday again. Mm-hmm. He bounces back and forth. He just he comes to my office every day and chills. I can imagine a lot of your clients, especially the ones in the beginning, have become friends with you now. Yeah, so this trip, he didn't rent out. nothing. He's just chilling in my office. He comes yeah. every day, comes, gets food, chills here for two, three hours. Yeah. Maybe he's got nothing to do. I don't know. So Josh friends. is going to watch this on that for yeah. sure. But it's cool, man. I don't care. Have you got any celebrity clients and stuff like that? Because I know man. I know you've met Tate, right? Heaps, and man. Tate, I speak to him all the time. He's yeah. a top G, man. That's what I'm saying. He's the, he's, he's a real, he's the real deal, man. Best one of the best guys I've met, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But He's often, straight to the point. Um, I can't fault him, man. The question is, do you charge him for a rental? No, he doesn't rent cars. To be honest, <laughs> He's right now is on the screen behind you. Um, he let me drive his Bugatti. His Bugatti. Was, so once he put up a post, he put up one of his podcasts that no one ever, no one has driven his Bugatti besides his assistant and his brother. So yeah. he sent him a message on WhatsApp. Gabriel, you're lying. Yeah. yeah, here's the video of me driving. He started to laugh. <laughs> he made me buy my Bugatti, man. Is it? Yeah, I got I got inspired by you, man, to be honest. You just thought, you know what? Yeah, I had the money. I do it. And I wasn't like, you know, when someone does you, bro, you only live once, go and buy it. Yeah. He pushed me. I'm like, all right, you know what? We live once, go and go, I'm going to buy it. So this is an interesting point to transition to, right? Because yeah. Because people like Tate, having them in your circle. Yeah. And all the people in your circle, do you feel like you've got to keep the people in the same energy levels, if not more, so you're constantly being inspired to do new shit? 100%. Now I need to level up again. Mm. And I feel like the people around me, some of the people that are around me, don't have the money, don't have the, like, the, well, I'm humble, so I don't care. I, I'll still feed them, I'll look after them, but I need to be surrounded with proper people that proper businessmen. It's just hard to find them. Yeah. Um, like Everyone's here for, they want to take from you. Yeah. No one's here to contribute and help you, you know? Yeah, no one's here to help you. Which is, um, so I help my boys anyway. I like them. They, they, yeah. I want them to grow too, you know? But that's what I'm saying. You've got a grower as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to continue to help growing your boys. So like right now, I'm probably in my group, I'm probably the wealthiest one out of them. Yeah. And they all look up to me because of that, I think. But I don't like that. Yeah. I like to be on the same level. I like if we go somewhere, we want to jump in a private jet. I'm not the only one paying, for example. Yeah. Like, not that I, I care about money, but like, I want them to be sort of responsible and to be a man and like, they, they have stacks as well. Yeah. So. Are well, you inspiring them? Everyone's you different though, them, you know? Right? I'm inspiring them around me and yeah. they're working. Now they're starting. And I think it took them about a year or two to get off their ass to actually start thinking like me, you know? Yeah. It just doesn't, it's not. How can I say? It's either you got it in you or you don't, man. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem with today's era. Like everyone thinks they have it in them, but they're, they're, not, they're not willing to work for it, man. Yeah. I know we spoke about this briefly, but you know in Australia? Yeah. I've never been to Australia, so I don't actually know what it's Australia's like. crazy, Which man. part are you from? Sydney. Do they have like rough areas and stuff in Australia man, as well? very rough areas. Yeah? Like 10 minutes from my house is like the most dangerous suburb in Sydney. Really? Yeah. Okay. I grew up with a lot of those guys as well. Um, I didn't do anything though. I was always kept, stayed in my lane, kept yeah. my head down. But the all, you're bound to be friends with someone that's there because you, you're growing up around it. Yeah, but you know, I, become, from, I come yeah. from public housing. Yeah, my housing block, for example, I had some neighbors were junkies, some neighbors were dealers, some neighbors were something else. For example, mm. you're bound to grow up around it. You know? This is what I'm saying. Like, you've got to keep yourself together. Did you ever business. feel like you have to separate yourself from people in the past or anything like that? No, nah, bro. No, no. I'm pretty much friends with everyone still. Um, I kept away from Australia though. It's been five years now. I, I don't really communicate with anyone from there anymore. Mm. I don't have many friends there anymore. Like I, I just moved on, man. Has it ever come across to you? First two years I came here, I switched off all my social media. I put my head down and I worked and I just came out in a bang. Yeah. I think that, that was the best thing I ever done. And now I still speak to them on Instagram if they send me a message or something. Mm. But uh, I don't really associate myself with anyone anymore. Yeah, yeah. no, it's interesting, bro. You, you have know. to put your head They're down. They're gonna drag you, you down, man. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You gotta put your head down. A lot down of them turn haters. Heaps of them turn haters yeah. and heaps of them turn my fans. Yeah, It must be spreading rumors and all that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah, I get a lot of that shit, man. Time, yeah. A lot of that shit. What's Especially the, when you're doing this, like, oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? Bro, I'm working. Yeah, 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 yeah come, to the, come, come to the office. Come see what I'm doing. And when people that move over here or people that come and visit here for a while, yeah. they see me in the office. They yeah. see me working hard. And they're like, all oh, those rumors are shit. And they tell me the rumors, I start laughing. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. fair enough. What means the most to you in life right now? Man, my son, bro. Yeah? Yeah. You just got one son? One boy, little Zane. Um, I do everything for him, man. And uh, he motivates me. He loves cars too. He's only four and a half. What's his name? Zane. Zane, shout out to um, yourself, bro. He, he, uh, he was here yesterday. He wanted to do a TikTok with me. Yeah. So I don't know how he's going to be when he grows up. Either he's going to spend all my money or he's going to 
times it by 10. Yeah, yeah. God knows. It's going to be a bit of both. As long as like I made his life a little bit easier than mine, I don't want him to go through what I went through. You know, I had hard patches in my life. But alhamdulillah, everything, you know, God is great. And I'm very happy with where I am right now. Alhamdulillah. So this is what I'm going to ask you for the final question. Yeah. yeah. So if Zayn's watching this right now in the future, let's just say... Just don't spend my money, dad. <laughs> don't blow it on, on private jets and, and women and... Yeah. So it's 15 years time. So he's about 20, 21 at this point now. Mm. He's watching this podcast back with his dad speaking. What's the message you want to leave for him aside from blowing the money? Man, this is a... I love you, dad. And uh, everything I do, even... Every blood, sweat and tear that I've done, I don't regret it as long as it's for you. I'm happy I did everything I did. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Ahmed, I want to thank you very much for coming bro, on the you're podcast. You're a champion. And it's been a while. And think, maybe we'll do another one in the new showroom. Definitely, bro. I Part think, two, I think when, when it opens, up and running. Um, I've got my residency here now in Dubai now, so I'm gassed about and that. bro, so. whatever you need in Dubai as well, bro. You've got a brother here right now. Yeah. Anything you need. Well, when you say that, I mean, there are a couple of cars around Anything here. you need besides <laughs> money. You're more than, you, you <laughs> we can, got an FA you can at me. Take my it, brother. Car, I need a yellow car. My yellow car. Take it. Yeah, I'm not like that, bro. These things don't mean nothing to me. Most important is loyal friends. Yeah. People that are going to be there for you when you need them most. Likewise, bro. Cars, material, money, all that shit comes and goes, Literally, bro, exactly you know, the same thing. I've been at the bottom of the bottom and I've been to the top again many times. Yeah. But now I try not to get to the bottom anymore. Yeah, yeah, now just I just want to stay at the top. I take certain risks now. But do you know what? It, you say that, but I can see you're still a very, very humble man. Alhamdulillah. Um, you have to be, bro. So you've kept that within you. I will never change. Yeah. Money will never change me. And as a saying that I say in every single podcast of mine, there was one thing that I always said to myself. I always tell people, uh, never forget where you come from. Because if you do, you'll end up back there. Yeah. So if you forget where you came from, you might lose everything and go back to exactly where you were. But if you always remember where you're from and how bad you were doing it, you'll do anything to avoid going back there. Yeah. So that's my quote of the day, man. No, no, it's a sick quote. It's a sick quote yeah. to end on as well. So where can people find you on socials? Obviously, uh, they probably already follow you anyway. I'm Adam well. yeah. On TikTok, I'm Adam well as well. YouTube channel coming soon. Um, yeah, a lot of people do follow me. And then if you guys want to see my success, my journey growing and everything. Stay tuned, man. You'll see everything. I post it all the time. You know, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do, yeah? Because I've really been looking forward to this podcast for the past two years. So here's what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you. I'm going to pay for one of you guys' rentals on the condition, obviously, that you pass all the uh, Ahmed's security checks and all that sort of stuff. Um, not the Bugatti, because we, can't, we ain't got the budgets for the Bugatti. But yeah, take a day in the Hurricane or something like that. I'll pay for that. As long as you can pass the security checks and you got a driver license, what are the requirements? Driver's license, passport, copy. Yeah. Five K deposit, security deposit for traffic fines. Yeah. That's it, man. It's pretty straightforward. Minimum age twenty one. Yeah. If you're under twenty one, you got to be with a guardian. If someone over twenty one, what to be able gonna, to drive it? It's going to sign the contract. So yeah. if he's 18, 19, 20, we like can still give it. Insurance is the insurance is valid. Yeah. But the excess is very high. Yeah. So I don't suggest that, man. And if I see someone under twenty one, yeah, want to rent a Lambo or something, I try to avoid it. Yeah. yeah I don't give it, especially McLaren. No yeah, chance. Yeah. Okay, so. We'll do that. Um, all you got to do is follow me and Ahmed on socials. Comment on this podcast, your favorite bit about Ahmed's story, as well as your Instagram handle. So we and your, probably winner. your favorite car as well. And your favorite car, yeah, because we want to know what, exactly what, what car you think we should add to the fleet. Exactly, yeah. Because I'm getting confused, man. Like, really? I don't know what they want anymore. You've got everything at this point. You That's what I'm saying. Know. Now they're telling me M5 CS, okay, no problem. GDR, R35, okay, no problem. Like, what else do I get? I don't know. Is there any cars here that you just wouldn't get? Like, you just stay away from entirely? I stay away from normal Aventadors because I have too many engine problems. Really? Yeah. So what's the difference about that between that and SVJ? SVJ has been updated a little bit. Like yeah. they learned a lot from the old ones. They've got a different firing order in the cylinders, a, right? A lot of stuff that they've upgraded in the car. But um, the last one used to be in the garage 20 days a month, bro. Really? Yeah, I lost so much money on it. Bloody hell. Yeah. That sounded like, what's the most unreliable car I know is what? McLaren's? It's yeah, like McLaren's, that. man. Yeah. McLaren's. I didn't want to talk about McLaren's, man. What's the worst? I just got it back after six months, the orange one. and. It, Came out of the agency, it's going back to the yeah, agency. Was that 765? Same day, came out today, it's going back there today. Why? Yeah. yeah. Can't get it right, man. Yeah. 765? Yeah. No, the seven uh, 720S Novatec, the orange one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy, man. McLaren. Missing but parts. I've heard. Have to wait for parts to come. A lot of the stuff is plastic in it, man. Yeah, but I've heard the they're the best driving cars, though. One of the fastest, one yeah. of the best, smoothest. Like gold cars in the world. But I just feel like they've... they've the quality is not there like the Germans, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I'm not dissing anyone in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the German, like, uh, even Italian, you know? The Huracan is bulletproof, man. Yeah. 120,000 kilometers, no issues. If you could McLaren, own one I've car. McLaren, I've replaced two engines on one of them, like. If you could own one car for the rest of your life. And everyone tells me this question. Go on. Right now, if it, if it is what, what's out with today, one car for the rest of my life will probably be a Pura Sangwe. Not by choice. Yeah. Not by V12, choice. V12, nice exhaust sound. Four seats. Four seats, perfect the for the fam. And the, and the sun in there as and well. And the nanny. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. Small boot space. It's plenty, man. Yeah. 
That's not, it's not too big of an SUV. Yeah. It's a perfect car. Yeah, fair enough. Well, Ahmed, I'm going to let you crack on with your Thank busy you, day, bro. bro. Um, and inshallah, when you open up, I'm inshallah. definitely 100% going to come. Yeah, we'll have I'd a love podcast to see that room. Place. Come, I'll probably shoot my first podcast with you. I'm on it. I'm going to hold right. you to that one. Yeah, done. <laughs> Kalas, done. <laughs> inshallah. Thank you guys for watching. If you want, follow me, guys. And stay tuned. Yeah, make sure you subscribe. Peace. Thank you, guys.